The following content is explicit. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Red Rum Podcasters. I'm Kristen. And I'm Natasha. And we're on episode seven. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we are, aren't we? <laughs> totally got this. I have been a space cadet all week. So I'm just going to let everybody else know I'm doing pretty good. Like I've made it longer than an hour and a half without having to run to the bathroom. So I'm doing pretty good. I have had serious belly issues for like three days. So I at least look human today. I have clothes on. Yeah, you're not in your moo. Yeah, I love my moo though. It's so comfy. But yeah, I've been sick. I didn't even go to work yesterday. I was just like on the couch all day except uh, when I took the kid to football. And then I just sat in the car feeling like shit. <laughs> so it's been a long week. How was your week? It was good. You know, um, I chopped over six inches off of my hair this week. And I can't even tell because you got it up. Carol, show yeah, you Yeah, bring quick. it down. Woo woo. Oh my gosh, you did. It's short, but I love it. I needed that good summer mom chop. What's funny is I was just thinking last night, I was I think her hair is a lot longer than mine. And then I'm like, well, I never really see it because she's always got it up. But yeah, I think it looks good. Thank you. I like it. I want to chop mine off so bad. My kids but... can't pull it now. Ugh, that'd be nice. My hair is getting longer. It keeps getting stuck. You know, like when you go to like sit up from the couch and it's like behind you and you get stuck. Yeah. <laughs> I used good. to do that all the time. Well, I'm doing it now because I can't cut my fucking hair. Because I got to be Mormon. Not that it gets Mormons. They're the ones that don't cut their hair, right? Or is it Pentecostal people that don't cut their hair? Pentecostal people okay. don't cut their hair. I'm religious now, <laughs> apparently. Right? <laughs> some some form of whatever doesn't cut their hair. Uh, I'm a nun. <laughs> I'm celibate and my hair's getting long. <laughs> I should be a nun for Halloween just to prove a point. I should. You know nuns actually shave their heads. Do they? I'm pretty sure I read an article one time where they like shave part of their head when they first get into the convent. Well, shit. Then I want to be a nun. Give me some kind of perk. Yeah. I don't know. Huh? Yeah. They, 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 if we have any nuns out there, let us know. (laughs) (laughs) I doubt a nun would be listening to our podcast. That is true. Maybe she's over there. She's like, Oh, these girls need Jesus. If we have any like rebellious non nun nuns, ex nuns. Yeah. Ex -nuns. nuns. Yeah, reach out and let us know what it was like. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's probably horrible. I don't know. Teach their own. I'm not going to yuck their yum. They might enjoy it. <laughs> so what do you have for us today? I actually have, I don't know. I don't know if I would call it a spook or a cryptid. Or It's, it's kind of got a lot of backstory. So you can look at it different ways. But I'm pretty pumped because it actually was requested by one of our Patreon subscribers. Ooh, that's exciting. So it's our first one of those, I think, that we've done so far. And I'm excited. I know they're probably going to be excited when they hear it because they know that I didn't ignore them. (laughs) (laughs) So just so you know, if you reach out, we will answer the call. Usually. This is pretty good. If you give me some like bogus thing about like gummy worms or something, I'm probably not going to do it. But this one's pretty cool. Well, that's exciting. Ooh, I was going to tell you. So (laughs) I'm a dumbass. (laughs) And I I watch our numbers like every day. I check our subscribers or downloads and all of that just to see where we're sitting. Yeah. And our numbers were going down. I'm like, how the hell do our numbers go down? I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I'm like, you can't undownload. <laughs> I mean, you can, but I think it still counts it as a download when you hit it the first time. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Then I realized after a week of trying to figure it out, that it was because I was on the last 30 days and we have officially been recording over 30 days. Oh, so it, the numbers were going down because of the fluctuations and downloads from the previous days. And when I went to all time, they went back up. So, <laughs> yeah, she was very concerned <laughs> last week. She's like, we've only had like four downloads this week. Oh, yeah, I'm a dumbass. It's OK. You live and you learn. Whew. Yeah, space cadet. So we're going to try to get through this. Well, that's good. So do you want to know what my story is about? Uh, 
Yeah, we go just get into it. Yeah, get we'll our hands ju- dirty. Yeah, we'll Let's just do it. we'll just get into it because it basically gives it away if I tell you what it's about. Oh, so we're doing the origin of the Amber Alert. Ooh, very so, important. Yes, we'll just go ahead and get into it. Nine-year-old Amber Hagerman was abducted while riding her bike on January thirteenth, nineteen ninety-six, in Arlington, Texas. And they wonder why I'm okay with my kid not riding a bike. Amber had received a pink bike for Christmas and went on a ride near her grandmother's house. She rode around the block to an abandoned Winn-Dixie to ride around the parking lot. So this was like where like all the neighborhood kids would hang out. And there were some kids there whenever she first started riding there. And she had rent she had went on this ride with her little brother and he decided to ride back before her thinking she wouldn't be far behind him. When he got back to their grandparents' house and told their grandfather where Amber was, they got in the car to go get her. When they got to the parking lot, Amber was nowhere to be found. Holy shit. All that was left was her pink bike. According to a witness, a man in a black truck had snatched her out of the parking lot. And they didn't do anything? They just watched her get snatched? He was in, like, he saw it from, like, a window in his home. Like, it was already too late before he had seen it. Like... Can you imagine being that guy witnessing that? The grandparents' house was not far from the Winn-Dixie. Like, it maybe took a couple minutes for the grandpa to go there. So it was literally, like, right after her brother rode off, he swept in, snatched her, and left. Oh, I bet he was watching the whole fucking time. Yeah. Four days later, Amber's body was found naked (gasps) in a local creek. The only piece of clothing found was a sock on her left foot. The poor baby. When they found her, she had several lacerations to her neck. And they never found the man (gasps) responsible. Are you fucking kidding me? No. God, Debbie Downer again. Like, so they had a ton of people, like, looking. And they had tried to get out as much as possible, like, what the truck looked like. I mean, I guess, you know, if all you have is a description of a truck, I mean, there's so, I mean, around here. Yeah, the witness did give a description of the man, but it was pretty generalized. It was just like a six foot, like white, maybe Hispanic man. Oh, well, that's vague. Yeah. <laughs> now on to the Amber Alert system. Okay. So Diana Simone, a Texas mother who had followed Amber's case, wrote into and called a local radio station suggesting the creation of an alert system to aid in future rescue efforts. So police communications and radio broadcasters collaborated to develop the system. Amber, in Amber Alert, stands for America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response. Oh, I thought it was for the girl. Was it her name, Amber? Yes. Yeah. I just didn't so, know. If it, like, sometimes, you know, there, there'll be a case and it'll bring about, like, a new uh, law and it'll be, like, Jerry's Law or something like that. I thought maybe it was based on her name specifically, not an abbreviation. So I think it was originally, like, they kind of made it fit her name. Ah, okay. But also, like, other states have other children's names in front of Amber Alert, like, and it's, like, dedicated to them. Like, their Amber Alert system is dedicated to that missing child or whatever. So according to the Amber Alert website, the national system has saved over 1,000 children since its launch in 1996. That's awesome. The criteria for an Amber Alert are there is reasonable reasonable belief by law enforcement that an abduction has occurred. The law enforcement agency believes that the child is in imminent danger of serious bodily injury or death. (laughs) Sorry. There is enough descriptive information about the victim and the abduction for law enforcement to issue an Amber Alert to assist in the recovery of a to assist in the recovery of a child. So they have to have enough information as far as like car that they were taken in, what the child looks like, potentially what the abductor, like who the abductor is or what the abductor looks like. That's why not every missing child gets an Amber Alert. So they can get snatched. And if there's not enough information, they just get put into some file. They get put into like just a missing child report. Because if you think about it, when those alerts come over your phone, what do they say? They say the child's name potentially what they were wearing, like potentially who took them and or what they looked like and the vehicle that was being driven. 
True, like, true. They have to be very specific in the details or the Amber Alert doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess. Because, I mean, point. you could say a blonde girl, but then everybody's looking for a blonde girl. Like, they don't know what they look like because it's not a photo alert. True. So whenever it has, like, a vehicle description, it can, like, you can look for the license plate. You can look for the make and model. Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense. The abduction is of a child 17 years old or younger, so they have to be a minor. Okay, I'm surprised it's not 18. 18 is considered an adult. Well, I mean, under, well, yeah. True. Oh, my God. I am seriously batting a 1,000 today. And the child's name and other critical data elements, include including the child abduction flag, have been entered into the National Crime Information Center system. So those are the, so like they have to be able to enter in all that information into like, and it has been entered into a, like it's been reported. Oh, okay. To be entered into this system before they can put out an Amber Alert on it. I wonder like you how can't long... just like, you can't just like run up to a police officer and be like, my little girl was snatched and then they put out an Amber Alert. You have to go through like the steps. I wonder how long it takes from, holy shit, this kid has been abducted to the Amber Alert going out. Like, what's the... I wonder what the average time frame is for that. Uh, I couldn't find anything on that. Because, I mean, a lot can happen in just, like, an hour. It, it, less than that. Yeah. I mean, it only takes, what, three minutes or less to kill somebody? Let alone a, a child. Yeah, there were reports of the whole, like, thing is, if the grandpa would have known, he might have been able to catch up to the truck. Yeah. Or, like, people would be looking for this little girl in this truck that looked scared or, you know. Yeah. So do they send them out? How, how do you know how they send them out as far as, is it only within a certain radius? Yes. Okay. Cause I've noticed that. And I'm like, I wonder how, how they determine how far. Cause like I get some on my phone and they're from like two or three hours away. And I'm like, fuck, I don't know. A lot of times, like whenever we get them from like Indianapolis, Uh uh-huh. They kind of have reason to believe that the vehicle would still be in, like, the vicinity, so, like, our area, and then a lot of times they'll send them out if they think that they know where they're going. Oh, okay. Because I just was wondering about that, because every, every now and then I get them, I'm like, man, that's a ways away. Like, what would they even be, do-? which I guess, you know, if you're looking to run a small town in the middle of bumfuck Egypt is probably a good place to stop so it makes sense but it just seems like they're very far away yeah and back to Amber's case they noted that she had so she she was found four days later and she had only been dead for two days oh so they had her for oh my god can you imagine what that poor little thing went through for two so like there was the potential to still find her for two days but because you know search efforts and stuff it took a while to get the information out now i know the mother and her family were like posting up flyers almost immediately after it happened yeah so and going on local news and stuff like that to try and did it say whether or not she had been assaulted no I mean, you could assume. I never like to assume, but that, yeah, I mean, didn't I can't imagine the hell that poor thing went through for two days. Yeah, the only thing that it said was that she had, according to the article that I read, it said that she had multiple lacerations on her neck as if, like, it was done with a knife or a screwdriver <gasps> and that her throat had been ripped out. Oh, my gosh. I was trying to be a little PG with it. Oh, no. You got to get gnarly. I know. We need details down it's to the nitty gritty. It's already a really gritty. sad case. I didn't want it to be like, oh, my God. Well, we you know? Well, oh, my God. Is We need the deets. I need the deets. They need the deets. We need the deets. <laughs> and that's why, that's why they make disclaimers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this podcast is explicit. Yeah. Well, there's that that you could always be like, heads up, this is, you know, has to do with kids. Yeah. And then you could go into whatever and, and, and go with that. I'm trying to think if I had any other questions. I mean, that's, I didn't realize that that's where that came from. Yeah. Huh. So it started because the woman that got it started wasn't even the girl's mom. Yeah. 
Like it was the mom good on her in creating it and everything. But it was just a mom that was super concerned that followed the case that was from the area. See, that's a good kind of Karen. <laughs> we oh, need goodness. those to, to be involved and, and start stuff like that because I mean just think if, if she hadn't said anything to anybody just thought it and was like oh it's not my place I'm not going to say anything there could There's have been other children that between have been... one and two thousand kids that we know of yeah that potentially wouldn't have been saved yeah so that's I mean, I would hope that eventually we would have came up with a system like the Amber Alert system, but... I don't have a lot of faith in people most of the time. (laughs) But it definitely wouldn't have been as early. Yeah. But that was good. I mean, downer, but interesting. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Welcome to this week's Inner Bitchin'. Today's topic is strangest collectibles number one barf bags number two toenail clippings number three locks of hair number four belly button fuzz and number five traffic cones (laughs) welcome back from the inner bitchin natasha are you ready what are your spook spooks today about? Okay, so I covered the goat man. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Why? My last name's Nanny. Well, still, this is a goat man. It just it has just trust me. Just trust me. This is actually the one that was requested. Well, they said something about a goat. I think they were testing me to see if I could come up with something about a goat. And I got a goat man. So, okay. mission accomplished. All right, let's let's hear it. Okay. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. The year was 1970. Researchers at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center in Maryland were conducting experiments on some goats when something went catastrophically wrong. This accident turned one of the researchers into a hideous beast that had the bottom half of a human and the upper half of a goat. What the fuck are you researching if you're turning people into goats? And did experiments on sheep. Oh, I don't know. These guys had goats. <laughs> sheep stock was low that year. <laughs> the scientist was then said to have aggressively attacked nearby vehicles. At least this is one of the many origin stories of today's topic, the goat man. This is just one. Another legend states that the creature was not created, but was simply a cryptid with more human-like top half minus a set of horns and legs of a goat, similar to the fawns of mythology. So think like Phil from Hercules, only bigger. My mind went to, like, the Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, well, okay. Age gap there. <laughs> We're seeing the age difference now. I mean, I have uh, I grew up with Disney movies and Hercules and everything, but for some reason, to really get it in real person... I went to the Chronicles oh. of Narnia. I can't remember his name, though. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I've seen them all. I think I've seen one. He was in the first one. I'm well, going to look it up. Okay. Another theory is that the Goat Man is more like a Bigfoot-esque creature. It is also considered to be an evil spirit from Native American lore named Oki, who was basically just a pissed-off goat herder seeking revenge on teens who killed the goats that he held so dear. Another legend that he was actually a goat farmer who just straight up massacred a bunch of teens after finding out they killed his goats. So similar in the two stories there. What'd you get? His name was Mr. Tumnus. Oh, okay, Mr. Tumnus. The hunting grounds for this mutated monstrosity reaches from Beltsville to Bowie and Mitchellville to Upper Marlboro. His most active time, according to legends, was between the 50s and the 70s. He can supposedly be heard yelling, squealing, and obviously making goat noises. Not sure how scary that is, but (laughs) yeah. (laughs) The goat man's first appearance took place in 1957 when people reported witnessing a giant hairy monster in Forestville and Upper Marlboro. Sorry, I was just thinking about it. Like, 
if he makes goat noises, what if he was like one of those screaming goats and he's just like, ah! <laughs> what if he was a fainting goat? <laughs> My husband always says that he wants to get screaming goats and fainting goats so that the screaming goats will scream to make the fainting goats faint. <laughs> That would be perfect. And then it's just, and then like, it's like a cycle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that would be perfect. One rumor was that the goat man was responsible for many canine deaths in the surrounding areas. A local paper even wrote that a dog had been found decapitated and members of the community were fingering the goat man for the dastardly deed. The family's teenage daughter said that she had heard noises and saw a large creature around the property the night that their poor pupper named Ginger went missing. Also, you said fingering. I know. I know. I was waiting to see if you'd catch that one. I I specifically chose that wording on purpose. The head was said to have been found 14 years later. Although by that time, I'm not sure how they would know that that was Ginger's head. It It would have been like decayed by then. Yes, exactly. He is also known for showing up on the road, wielding an axe, killing teens, and eating poor doggos. Many say the goat man lurks around a bridge in Bowie known as the Crybaby Bridge, which that bridge is also known as the Governor's Bridge or Goatman's Bridge, and it's just a single-lane bridge in Prince George County. According to lore, if you park under the bridge after dusk, you may experience hearing the screams of a crying baby or the sound of a goat. You may even see the goat man himself, but beware for he is known for jumping on cars and attacking the drivers. It is also rumored that he will deflate your tires so the victims cannot escape and then drag the occupants of the vehicles into the woods with him. The lore then grew to include him attacking horny teenagers at the local lover's lanes. I don't know about you, but that's enough to keep me out of lover's lane and out of bridges. Why why is it that cryptids tend... To fuck with kids that just want to fuck. <laughs> I, like everything. It's like, oh, they these these two teenagers were at the the lookout and it or makes, they were on Lover's Lane and something was beaten on their car. And like, come on. It makes me very skeptical. Leave the poor kids alone. Because I'm like, it's probably just a scary story they made up to keep the kids from fucking in the woods or whatever. Which it wouldn't stop me from fucking anywhere, to be honest, because I just want laid. Like, I mean, it's just what it is. I'd be like, excuse me, goat man, can you take a number here? Like, I'm busy. I don't know. I don't think it... It makes the kids want to go out there more to see if they're going to see it. Uh, there maybe. is a lot of stories like that where they're like, oh, like, so-and-so got attacked, so their friends went out there, too, to see if they would get attacked or... Or, you know, stuff would happen to them. Like, I've heard it time and time again. But if you're going out there to try to see this cryptid monster, whatever, you're not going to be as into porking as you would be if you were just going out there to bang. I mean, that's true. But then, so I see, mean, it's still contraceptive. I mean, not really, because I would take, like, I'd take the person that I want to bang out there. And then whenever nothing fucking happens, all right, baby, let's get it on. But you never like, know, because as soon as you start getting down and dirty, you know, you might get to, like, second base, and then poof. If that's what it man. takes to see it, I mean, fuck. <laughs> Isn't that the point, is to go out there to see it? I guess. Like, what does he do? Lurk in the bushes, and then, like, wait, and they're like, oh, 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 the shirt's coming off. It's my time. It's my time. I see titties. <laughs> That's my cue. <laughs> Maybe that's his like thing. He likes titties. So whenever they take their shirts off, he's like, yep, my well, time. Maybe he likes peckers. I mean, I like peckers. I mean, I like peckers too, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know. Yeah, maybe it's something with the kids getting naked and like all these cryptids are horny too. And they're like, let's get in on like, let me. In. Yeah. <laughs> I want to join. You want a third? <laughs> Can you imagine having a threesome with a goat man? <laughs> Which half is the goat? Because some of the lore has it being the top half and some of it's the bottom half. They come and it's just meh. <laughs> Oh, shit, I am so Maybe they're just uh, voyeurs, and they just like to watch. 
Oh, yeah, like peepers? Yeah. Ooh. Because that's, uh, that's considered voyeurism. Ooh. Yeah, maybe they just like to watch. And they're just like, I just... Wanna... Well, you can't see a whole lot in a car. Maybe that's why they get so close and they scare everybody because you get a better view. <laughs> like, can you move a little to the left, sir? <laughs> I can't see what's going on. I need the POV shot, please. <laughs> Oh my god, that is great. Now I'm just like having these horrible pictures of like goat men. I'm glad we have the disclaimer on the top of this episode. Yes, that, that comes in handy. Now I'm just over here trying to, I'm still over here figuring out which half's the goat because I might not want to involve this guy. I mean, then it, if it's the bottom half, is it then considered bestiality? Is it still bestiality if it's the top half? I mean, if it's the top half goat and the bottom half man and he's banging. Like, he could just get behind me, and I don't even have to look at him. We wouldn't even know the difference. I'm not sure the dude would be up for that, but, I mean. Oh, what if it was, like, a thing, and, like, the goat man comes a knocking, like, can I get in on this? And she's like, sorry, Bobby, you got to get out. (laughs) I hear he's packing. You got to (laughs) go. Rachel told me. Oh, my God. (laughs) I just I see this like real like dapper dress like goat man like knock on door excuse me sir <laughs> like top ha- like top half man and he's got like a six pack and she's like sorry his body's better than yours <laughs> excuse me sir may I have this dance <laughs> I like the click of the hooves oh oh Jesus <laughs> <laughs> oh man we are really getting into this aren't we. So if you don't already subscribe to our Patreon, this is kind of what it's like. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Only other topics, but oh my gosh. Okay, so the next one, I need to do some research because I think we're recording the next one next week. And I'm really thinking about hitting up the elves and doing the Iceland elves. Okay. Y'all won't want to miss it. Just saying. It's going to be good. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a lot like this. Only probably worse (laughs) that gives me a couple more weeks to do mine yeah so i just have that on the list but if you want to do yours next we could do yours next it's fine i'm just saying my week looks like on my research okay i'll go ahead and do because i got to do notes on it anyway but anyway that in all of its glory was the goat man which actually there's also a goat man in texas i did not look him up or anything but supposedly there's like a same concept, totally different background and everything from what I've gathered. I just did not look into it because I didn't want to make this episode like freakishly long about two goat men. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want them fighting over masculinity or anything. <laughs> so, and actually, I'm really surprised because nothing actually says for sure they know it's a man. Maybe it it's a goat like, lady. Just go out and get you some goat puss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so disgusting. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's, it, it there's, oh, I'm just over here thinking about shaving. Like, <laughs> no, with a goat woman, it's full bush or nothing. Oh, good. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Could you... Does she have goat boobies? Oh, little teats. <laughs> How many she got? Like, eight. That's <laughs> <laughs> like six, eight, no. 12. No, goats have udders. So they've got oh, four. right. But, ooh, how would that work if you're half and half? There'd be nowhere to put your udders. Unless you had, like, a big old set of udders. Up. Oh, that'd be, oh, that's just wrong. <laughs> we need an artist to to draw us up a goat woman with some. <sighs> yes. Or what if she udder has. Udder titties. What if she has double udder titties so that she has two titties? And so then it's eight nippies. Uh, ooh. <laughs> the pictures I have in my head right now are so disgusting. <laughs> But anyway, on that note, I mean, wait, I got one more. <laughs> oh, one more. Okay, we'll let you have it. I mean, let's be honest, though. If it was goat puss, like some men will stick their dick in anything. That so. is true. I've dated some of them, which is why we are no longer together. <laughs> when I found out that they would stick it in anything, I was out. <laughs> this is like premium grade over here. We don't need to be doing that shit. <laughs> Anyway, anywho, now for the house.
TV, check us out on Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash Thread Run Podcasters. The $1 tier is for a shout out on the pod. The $5 tier is for a shout out and for extra episodes. And now we are releasing episodes a day or two early. Yes. Also for that. I feel like there's something else that we changed. Oh, we are putting extra content in the first two months just to add a little cushion. And then we'll be going to our once a month uh, editions after that. Follow us on TikTok at the Red Rum Podcasters 23 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at the Red Rum Podcasters. Yep. We try to make posts. Yeah. We try to post content for you guys as much as we can. (laughs) Yeah. And and usually we try to find pictures relevant to our topics that week and and post them too so that you guys have a visual of what we're talking about also uh, and you know what we're looking at. Please rate and review and subscribe to our podcast wherever you are currently listening. We are on multiple platforms, so tell your friends as well, no oh. matter what. And I'm really excited because we are officially international. Oh, are we? We have one person, I don't know who they are, but one person, which, hello, if you're out there listening, who's listened to, I think, every episode from the United Kingdom. Oh, yay. So, hey, hey, hey. We've made it across the pond. Yes, we have. Um, We've had a Canadian listener. We've had our first German listener last week. And just a couple other places that they listened once, but they didn't listen, so I'm not going to shout them out. But, yeah, like, tell your friends. Let everybody know. I mean, I think it's awesome. Like, to spread that far is, is fantastic. And we really appreciate everybody, you know, getting us out there and maybe encouraging others to listen to us. Yes. Yes. So we greatly appreciate that. And keep that up. Also, if you have any requests as far as topics or anything like that, we also have an email. It's the Red Rum Podcasters at gmail.com. And feel free to contact us on social media as well if you have any requests or just any comments in general, anything you liked about the pod or, I mean, maybe that you didn't like. There might be, you know, like I said, we're not going to make everybody happy, but we at least put it into consideration. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it. Sorry about all the uh, weird goat man talk. (laughs) (laughs) I think it was necessary, though. It was. It was necessary. I needed that today. (laughs) So uh, until next week, take care of yourselves and stay Stay strange. strange.